Our names are Mike and Heather. We recently bought a Ford Transit Connect to convert into a camper van. Mouse! Although our van is not finished, we headed out on a Route 1 road trip, which is the longest north to south road in the United States. We have already been through Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New York. Hello, we are Mike and Heather. We are currently in New Jersey. We've got a couple stops today. Our first stop is Thomas Edison's house. And right now we're still driving on that 1-9. So it's a little confusing because you just have to make sure that you're following nine signs as well, not just route one, which is how we got messed up yesterday in New York City. So thanks when a little haywire once we hit New York City. We got off of Route 1 because it just disappeared. But now that we know to look for the nine signs as well, it's going a lot smoother. We're coming up to the Thomas Whoa. Edison Center at Menlo Park. Your destination is on the left. I'm pretty sure Edison was known as the Wizard of Menlo Park and a lot of his work took place in this area. So oh, look at the bunny. really excited to be here. So we're actually here too early this time, which is a change up from being too late. It's actually only 8.30, so it doesn't look like we're gonna get to go into the museum, but that sculpture is still amazing. The location of this stop is Menlo Park. This site is actually where his laboratory was. I think he referred to it as his invention factory. A lot of the patent work and inventions that he and his team made were done here at this site. That's really cool. I just saw that it had the world's largest light bulb and decided to add that to the itinerary. I had no idea all the cool history behind it, so you learn something new every day. The world's largest light bulb. This plaque just explains like what this site is. So everything you just read on Wikipedia? Yeah. <laughs> You could actually go inside of it. Bummer, I would totally gone inside. It is pretty cool. This is actually a memorial tower. I think there was a tower erected on the site, which is where his laboratory would have been in 1929. And then this one was erected after that to be the memorial that we see today. So that's a bit ironic. The first tower was destroyed by lightning, which is why they had to create a second one. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. I mean, Edison is this kind of monumental figure in American history, and, and you really get a sense of that here. Now we're on to another monumental figure of American history, or I guess global history. Yeah. Albert Einstein. <laughs> the destination is on the left. Okay, one, one, to Mercer Street. We were a little bit confused because there wasn't informational placards or anything like that indicating that this was a site of significant importance. So we just took a look to see, okay, what's going on? Did we miss it? Are we in the wrong place? But it's actually a private residence. So according to Google, you can go and observe it from the sidewalk, take photos and things like that, but there's no visiting inside because it's not a historic house museum or anything like that. It is someone's home. So we're probably gonna park, walk to it, and maybe get a couple of photos and then continue on. They do allow parking, just not for a long time. We're only gonna be here a couple minutes, so we are going to be well within that two hour time limit. So he lived here for 20 years. There's actually a lot of cool houses in this area to check out too as well when you're on your walk down there. So we did a little bit of looking online and it actually, I guess, is reported that Albert Einstein didn't want his house turned into a museum and his family respected those wishes and also declined that as an option as well. So it became a private residence, which is what it is now. Oh, there's another person down there taking a picture of it too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Some other people are having the same thoughts we are. <laughs> it's still a cool thing to do, it's only like four minutes off of Route 1. Yeah, I mean, like, the history is obviously there, and you get to drive through Princeton, which is kind of cool. Yeah. By no means a wasted trip. I think just a little bit different than what our expectation was oh, coming yeah. from... I thought um, it was going to be another museum or... Oh. Yeah, coming from Menlo Park with Edison, I think we are maybe expecting that there was more access available, but again, we haven't gone through and individually researched each of these stops that we found. But we did it on purpose, so that yeah. would, would be pleasantly surprised and... That and, is pretty cool though. Yeah, be able to be excited 
So basically I made a bunch of pinpoints down Route 1 and didn't really do any research into them, just kind of like points of interest. We the giants be the we're heading back to Route 1 now and I think we're going to maybe swing by the Route 1 diner and get a bite of food. Yes, yeah, so um, just eating for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll, we'll check back in then. Aha, there it is. We're at the diner, we're gonna go in and grab some food. <laughs> Again, like summer nights and never end. I feel like I'm 21, so easily falling. I was not expecting this much food. I way over ordered, but made a valiant effort, so I'm very full now. <laughs> We're leaving the Route 1 Diner. Good food. An enjoyable stop. They had stickers on the inside that showed Key West and Port Kent is the, I guess, beginning and end depending on which direction you're traveling of Route 1, so that was cool. Right now, we're heading towards Philadelphia. We're excited to, to get there and see some more Revolutionary War time history. Hey, we're in Pennsylvania. South 1 to Philadelphia. Keep left. We've veered off Route 1 a little bit just to allow us to get in to see the Liberty Bell. So that's going to be kind of our, our next destination. This is it! This is the world famous Liberty Bell. It feels like it's Christmas Day, like dancing in the pouring rain. Like a new car, like a You can actually go into the old Congress room. All of this stuff in there, so it's pretty neat. I spotted the most important part of this entire complex. Bathrooms. Oh, I'll take it to the floor so you okay. Something you, something you do It makes me feel brand new I feel so young and I feel so It's kind of crazy to think that you can almost pinpoint the start of America at one place. We're not able to go into Independence Hall right now because the tickets are all sold out. But you can still get into Congress Hall without any reservation, so we're going to go check that out and see what... And it's free. And it's free. So we're going to go look and see what's over there. So we're currently in line with all the other poor planners to see the free building that we can walk to, which is Congress Hall. Congress Hall was actually amazing. I feel a lot less bad about missing the Independence Hall tour just because of how great it was and hearing all the different tidbits of history. Like that's where the first transfer of power was from Washington over. That building actually served as Congress for the first 10 years of, of American history and they had the debates within the House of Representatives in the Senate, and we actually got to go in both of those rooms, so that was really cool. Yeah, but I was definitely a little bit bumming about not being able to go into Penn Hall, and now I feel a lot better just because of how great that was. And we're doing this absolutely no justice as far as the history selling part of it, so you're just gonna have to check it out yourself. So if you've ever seen the movie National Treasure, Nicolas Cage was running around this building up here. <laughs> we are wrapping up our time in Philadelphia. We saw the Liberty Bell. We were able to walk around Independence Hall and then we got to take a tour of Congress Hall. And then we walked over to the site of Ben Franklin's house. And we got back to Oppo, our van, before our uh, metered parking went up, which I was really nervous about because there was always the ticket man walking around ticketing everybody. So I was like, we need to make sure that we get back in time. Yeah, we are on our way towards Washington, D.C. We're going to be leaving Pennsylvania and heading into Maryland. So we'll probably get to DC towards the evening and we'll do a little bit of walking around then. Or maybe tomorrow morning. We're still playing this part by here. Now we're just trying to find route one, hop on that, and head down to Washington. Yep. So we'll 
check back in once we figure out our plans because we've had super late nights every night of the road trip so far so we're trying to decide if we should do an early night to just kind of get caught up on some things or um, push through and continue making progress on Route 1. All right. We're actually on our way to a campsite just outside of Washington, D.C. We were kind of torn because it would have been cool to go into Washington, D.C. at night and see everything lit up and, and how cool all that would look. But by the time we got there, it probably would have been too late to actually walk around and see the things that we want to see and still find a place to sleep tonight. So we decided that we would find a campsite that would allow us to take a shower, um, get caught up on some stuff, and then be able to leave early, get into Washington, D.C first thing in the morning and then kind of go from there so that way we can maybe hit up Mount Vernon in Virginia or do some things along the way and still get a good start on the day I'm living my best life, living my, living my best life. So come and get